If you're looking for ways to lower your cholesterol without having to reach for medications, or even if you're on medications and need to find ways to help, then this is the video for you. Keep watching to find out simple, natural ways to get those numbers down. Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Richardson, a board certified family practice physician. I'd like to welcome you to Family Med, a channel that focuses on giving you practical and accurate medical information to help you and your family. If you think this would be something helpful, then make sure you subscribe, hit that notification button, and follow along with us. So today, we're going to be going over some simple things that you can do to start lowering your cholesterol right now. But before we do that, though, let's review briefly why you should even care about your cholesterol. You see, cholesterol is made up in your liver and has a lot of important functions throughout the body. But like anything, too much of a good thing and too much in the wrong place can cause some problems. Cholesterol is somewhat like fat in that it doesn't dissolve in water. But because of that, it needs to be transported throughout the body on molecules called lipoproteins. These carry cholesterol, among other things, around the blood. Now, there are different kinds of lipoproteins that travel around in the blood. One of them we call LDL. That's a low-density lipoprotein. It brings cholesterol to the different parts of the body and is responsible for the cholesterol deposits that contribute to heart disease. This is what we refer to as bad cholesterol. In contrast, we have what we call HDL, or high-density lipoprotein. These are responsible for taking cholesterol away from the different parts of the body. Now, we often refer to these as good cholesterol. It has a protective effect on the heart. So our goal in treating cholesterol is finding ways to decrease the LDL, or the bad cholesterol, and increase the HDL, or the good cholesterol. So let's talk about some ways that you can do that. The first thing I'm going to recommend is focus on what we call monounsaturated fats. We've all heard about how you need to avoid saturated fats, and that is true, but help to help lower your LDL and improve your HDL, start adding monounsaturated fats to your diet. These are going to be found among other things like olives, olive oil, canola oil, tree nuts such as almonds, walnuts, pecans, and cashews. These kinds of fats do great in decreasing your bad and increasing your good as well as working on preventing something called oxidation of the cholesterol that contributes to its clogging the arteries. The second thing I'm going to recommend is adding a different kind of fat into your diet. These are called polyunsaturated fats. These are principally your omega-3 fatty acids. You find these in things such as your more oily fish like salmon, mackerel, herring, deep sea tuna like bluefin and albacore, and somewhat into the shellfish like shrimp. You can also find them in tree nuts and seeds like flaxseed. Diets higher in these foods have been found to help decrease your LDL cholesterol, as well as have been found to decrease your risk of heart disease as well as type 2 diabetes. So those are two things that you should add to your diet. The next though is something you need to eliminate. That's your trans fatty acids. These are a fat that is processed by adding hydrogen to it. It's done to keep them a little bit more stable. And so you'll find these things in commercially available margarine and butter spreads, pastries and cookies. The problem with trans fats is that they increase your total cholesterol, including your LDL, and decrease your good cholesterol, or HDL, by up to 20%. In more and more countries, food companies are required to list how much trans fats on their nutrition labels, but it's important that you read them. These labels can be tricky, though. In the United States, companies can label their product as zero grams of trans fats per serving if they contain less than 0.5 grams per serving. It doesn't mean they don't have any, so, since most of us eat more than a serving, you can still get a lot of trans fats in your diet. Read the nutritional labels. If it contains things listed as hydrogenated oils or partially hydrogenated oils, then they contain trans fats and you need to stay away from them. The next thing is something good that you need to be adding to your diet, and this is soluble fiber. This is the type of fiber that comes from plants and can be dissolved in water, but as humans, we don't digest. The benefit from soluble fiber comes from the effect that it has on the bacteria in your gut. The digestion of the fiber by the bacteria help lower your bad cholesterol. Great sources of soluble fiber include beans, peas, lentils, fruit, and whole grain oats. You can also find it in fiber supplements like Metamucil. Now the fifth thing you need to do is exercise. Exercise has been shown to both decrease your harmful LDL but also increases your good HDL. Larger studies have shown that 30 minutes of activity five days a week can improve your cholesterol and decrease your risk of heart disease. One study showed that setting your goal of getting your heart rate to 85% of its maximum can increase your good cholesterol. So exercise overall is good, but as you increase your intensity and length of exercise, an added benefit is found. 
Number six is an obvious one. And if you're doing it, it's the most important thing you can do. That is stop smoking. Smoking is the worst thing that you can do for your heart and has a significant impact on how your body handles cholesterol. In smokers, the immune cells are unable to return cholesterol from vessel walls to the blood where it should be and contributes to plaque formation that leads to clogged arteries. It also, in a large study, showed that it can decrease your HDL and increase your total cholesterol. So do your body a favor and quit now. Now, number seven is focusing on losing weight. All the things that we've been talking about today can help with this, but studies have shown that just by losing weight, you can have a positive impact on your cholesterol. Several studies have shown that no matter the weight loss plan, help increase the good HDL and decrease the bad LDL. So pick a good healthy eating plan and stick with it. The next is related to the saturated fats that we discussed earlier. The closer you can get to a vegetarian diet, the better you will do with helping your cholesterol. But for many of us, we're not quite willing to go that direction yet. So pick meats that are more lean. We've already talked about fish, but chicken and turkey are good options to reach for. Now, if you're going to go for red meats, though, if possible, try and get grass-fed. Beef and pork that are raised in feedlots with lots of corn tend to have higher concentrations of the harmful fats. So go for lean cuts of hamburger and cut off the extra fats before cooking. All these things are going to help cut down on the amount of saturated fats in your diet. Now, number nine is considering adding plant sterols and stanols. These are plant-based versions of cholesterol, but they don't contribute to elevating your cholesterol. They compete with the bad forms of cholesterol and prevent them from being absorbed as much. They've also been shown to decrease your LDL. However, the only problem with it is we haven't quite seen it translate into decreasing actual risk of heart disease. So hopefully we'll get some better studies in the future looking into this. Now the last thing you can do is look at different supplements. There are several things out there. And most of them work on increasing the amount of omega-3 fatty acids in our diet. Things like fish oil and flaxseed oil have been found to be helpful in increasing your HDL. And all the evidence still isn't quite clear, it's felt to help reduce the risk of heart disease. Red yeast rice is another one that can be helpful in lowering your cholesterol. It has properties that are somewhat similar to the statin medications and can play a role in improving your cholesterol. So keeping an eye on your cholesterol is an important part of helping manage your risk of heart disease. There are medications that can be very effective and then some an important part of your treatment plan. However, there is much that you can do to control this without having to rely on medications. For most people, focusing on changing your lifestyle, exercising on a regular basis, avoiding smoking, trans fats and saturated fats, and increasing the amount of unsaturated fats, soluble fiber, and plant sterols and stanols can be a great start in living a healthier life and preventing that heart attack or stroke. Well, I hope you found this to be helpful. If you did, please take time to give this video a like and share it with your friends. It helps our channel to grow and reach other people that may need this in their life. And if you haven't done so yet, don't leave without subscribing and hitting that notification button so you don't miss out on any of our future content. Well, until next time, this is Family Med with Dr. Richardson. And remember, take care of your body because it's the only one you have.